Hello everybody, welcome back to another modern gameplay video. Today we are playing some Simic Ponza. Now this is kind of a revisited episode because we did play Simic Ponza on the channel a long time ago and it was easily one of like the top five worst performing decks on the channel. But now we have some new pieces that didn't exist back then. And so we're gonna play the deck again with a little bit of revisions and see how it does. Um, so the main idea behind the deck before was two specific cards, the first of which is Mwanvoli Acid Moss, which you know has been making an uprise in modern as of late. People have been playing it a lot more because they realize how good it is to deny your opponent's mana and then you get even more mana. You get to do more things, they get to do less things. Um, and then the second card of which is uh, Annex, which is another copy of Monvoli Acid Moss. You steal their land. So it's the same thing because they're losing a mana, you're gaining a mana. Um, but the problem is that these are both four mana cards. It's like the main focus of the deck, but they're both four mana cards. So we're going to try to do a version that's a lot more consistent with playing these things on turn two. You might be wondering how we're going to get four mana on turn two. Um, well, if you know Modern at all, you are familiar with Arbor Elf Utopia Sprawl combination. If you don't know that, um, Arbor Elf untaps a forest. You put the Utopia Sprawl on a forest, tap it for two. Arbor Elf untaps it, tap it for two. That's four mana. The second way, though, we have a second way. Um, you literally have any mana dork, an Arbor Elf, a Utopia Sprawl, or a Noble Hierarch to be a mana dork for the second turn, and then Simeon Spirit Guide. Because uh, those the mana dork plus the, your two lands will generate three. You exile Simeon Spirit Guide, that's four. And we really want to get out Monvoli, Acid Moss, or Annex by turn two, and really start that land hate right away and ramping us up right away. And we're going to ramp with these cards up to Frost Titan. That is the main win condition of these kinds of like blue pawns Zedex because it is a fatty that's hard to kill that continues to lock down your opponent's lands. So that's pretty cool. But back when we played this deck two years ago, um, that was like our only win condition. And if we didn't find the Frost Titan, we were basically screwed. Um, but now we have an awesome mana sink, Hydroid Crisis. So this deck generates just way too much mana, more than it could ever use. And when we do that, Hydroid Crisis is quite solid because it gives you a body that can win and also gain you life and draw you cards. And gaining life is pretty good right now because of all the blitz and burn. And uh, speaking of gaining life, we also have a set of Uro, which is the reason that Simic is now a good color combination these days. Um, because Uro can gain you life as well against Blitz and Burn, but also be a super annoying and recurring threat in the late game. Um, so now this deck is a lot more potent, has a lot more win potential than it did two and a half years ago when we first played this. Um, so yeah, let's try it again and see how it do. And shoutouts to our sponsors, TCG Player and Mana Traders for all of your Magic the Gathering needs. If you'd like to play this deck in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That's our TCG Player link and anything you purchase through there really helps out the channel. It is the number one place on the internet to find Magic the Gathering singles. And if you want to play this deck on MTGO, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code MarinMoon to save 15% off. And you can rent today's deck and play along with us. They're the most trusted and reliable Magic Online card rental service. The best way to play all the MTGO you want. And shoutouts to our supporters over on Patreon. Their names have been scrolling down below. It is because of you guys' channel is possible. So thank you so much for your support. If you would like to become a patron as well, link is down below. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. All right, we are live here on Twitch. Got our deck freshly rented out, courtesy of Mana Traders. This is Simic Ponza. We went over basically the entire deck in the intro, which is a first because in the intros, I'd normally never go over everything. I guess the only card I didn't mention in the intro is Spreading Seas to disrupt mana on the second turn if we don't hit a mana dork on the first turn. Can also get it out on the first turn if we SSG for it, but mainly just want to get out these as quick as possible to ramp up to that or this and then get this back later. Um, sideboard, we got two copies of Aether Gust for Blitz and Red Decks and Aggro and stuff. And then Mystical Dispute for Counterspells. Vela Summer for Counterspells and anti -thoughtsies. Um, Obstinate Bailoff because Blitz is going to be a problem. And then Ashiok for Titan Decks. And then Damping Sphere for Amulet Titan, Tron, and Combo. And with that, we are ready to go on to the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Hobo Nugget. And we won the die roll. Going to be on the play here with some... Simic Ponza. That looks great because that's a turn two. That's turn two annex. That's what we're looking for. Let's just not misplay our colors. We got to get the right colors here. 
So this is also like a turn three, um, turn three Titan potential, if we find one. The Seiju, so they're in a combo deck of sorts. All right, Shaka Breeding Pool. Uh, Utopia Sprawl on blue. Exile SSG. Annex. So now I wouldn't mind a Titan or Hydrate Crisis or an Uro. So what could this be? What would be running Bastagia besides Tooth and Nail? Oh, it's oh, it's a uh, it's the um, indomitable like polymorph deck. Ooh, it's a good spell. And they need uh, to get four mountains online, and I am never letting them have four mountains. No way. You ain't having four mountains against me. Wait, are they scooping? Like, it looks like they scooped. Oh. There's a little time stall right there. It looked like they scooped. There's no reason to scoop because I actually have no way to win, so... I have no way to win right now. Called it, just couldn't recall the name of the deck. You've played against them before? Hobo Nugget? Cool. They were on a list with Platinum Imperion last time, so it was a Madcap, yeah, Madcap Moon kind of deck. Ooh. Spreading Seas. Ooh, there it is. It is time. Frost Titan time. No mana for you. How adorable to think you're allowed to have lands. Only I'm allowed to have lands. He cheated out Emmy on me and I played Force of Despair at end step. Oh, that's hilarious. I've never seen it. I've seen Force of Despair in Modern once. When it first got printed, people tried it in Jund. All right, so against this combo deck, uh, I probably want Aether Gust, and that's it. Cut a couple Uros. Urosis. Urosis, Cirrosis. Dang it, I just feel like there's like a piece of dust or a something in my nose right here. Hey, Jacobo, how's it going? You were tapped out too? Nice. It's even more disrespectful when you're tapped out and do that. Okay, this hand is too slow. I think I have to mull. Okay, I'll keep that one because at least it disrupts colors in the early game. Throw away a forest. Have any Zendikar spoilers caught your eye? The uh, two drop one one that at the beginning of combat you put a counter on something. Okay, we drew an annex as well. So once we get to that four mana slot, we're really disrupted mana, but we have to get there quicker than turn four because they're going to be able to do their combo by turn four. Okay, there we go. There's my way. Which I should have played a Winslow Peep there. I don't know why I didn't. I just got excited and saw the nobles like, play it, play it, play it. A lightning bolt. That's an interesting lightning bolt. Got a skull in the clouds. Hey, there's the original Pyromancer.
Okay, so I can't play blue spells anymore, but I still got double Monvoli, and I have a bunch of mana dorks to potentially draw into. Ooh, I drew my blue source. Heck yeah. So all I need is one mana dork now. So next turn I have the mana to go Monvoli plus Spreading Seas. Oh, and they're stuck on mana as well. Heck yeah. All right, one, two, three, four. Monvoli again. I'm gonna Spreading Seas my own land. Yeah, baby Ken, that's the plan. Spreading Seas my own land, so I got double blue. They're just scooping it up, they can't. They're not about to deal with that land hate. See, I was going to spreading seeds my own land to make it an island so that I have double blue for annex and steal their last land. And then spreading seeds with whatever next mountain they play and turn it into blue. And then I was eventually going to draw a titan by then. So that was amazing. A great showing for the deck. Sweet. Got a game here against Tamarindo. And we won the die roll. Going to be on the play here with some Simic Ponza. And that looks good. That looks really good. I mean, I do need one more mana, but I can, like, turn to an Uro if I'm desperately searching for one. But I think I'm just going to turn to a, a Spreading Seas. I think that's the most logical thing to do. But let's do the usual and put our Utopia Sprawl in here, naming blue. Pass it on over and let's not get Thought Seized and have a good day. Or let's get Thought Seas and have a bad day. Their choice. Okay, so we cannot Spreading Seas here. So let's Uro. Draw a card, get another land. Misty, let's crack it just because and get a breeding pool. Pass turn. And let's find out what they're on. See if they're on Infect or if they're on Boggles. They're not on Boggles, they would have played a Boggle. Is it Druid Vizier, perhaps? What's the current record? It's on the top right of the screen. If you just look up up there. Oh, flagstones. This is like boom bust, like Naya boom bust. All right, let's go for annex number one on their temple garden. Eladomri's call. Okay, so it is Druid Vizier. Unfortunately, I only have two blue sources, so I can't go Annex plus Spreading Seas next turn. Unless I top deck a blue source. They find an Elvish Reclaimer. Okay, so they're on the uh, Titan deck. And they're, they are a deck that ramps like crazy, and also they sometimes play Aether Vial, so this is kind of a bad matchup, but it looks like we're doing pretty solid at the moment. Yeah, so I have to definitely annex that Flagstones before they sack it. Mwanvuli. All right. Steal the flagstones and pass turn. And I can disrupt two mana this turn. I can Monvoli, then Spreading Seas, and then I can play a really big Hydrate Crisis. Oh no, they found another one. Okay, so they get to ramp here. All right, whatever, whatever, green, green. Monvoli on their forest, see if they want to sack their forest in response. All 
All right, they're sacking their forest. Uh, so if I spreading seeds on the on the flagstones, does it still get that graveyard ability? I I I think it still does. Once you sack it, if it has a spreading season and it becomes an island, I think once it hits the graveyard, it'll see that ability still. I'm pretty sure. Alright, let's just go Hydro Crazes next turn. No more BSing and giving them time. Now they're going to hit their Dryad. Ramanop, that's unfortunate. Gets in for one, we'll take it. All right, time for the big boy. Hydrate Crisis, X is six. Gain three life, draw three cards, get a bunch more land hate, and maybe find Frosty Tees. Got another Annex and another Monvuli. I like it. More land denial for us. And I can even get back Uro now. So the Elvish Reclaimer is kind of a little bit annoying because it stops my targets with these, but still. I gotta gain control of that Flagstones. Like, I gotta bait with Monvuli on there. Okay, they're just doing it now. Alright, cool. That's good. So now I can for sure deal with two lands and get them to scoop. And I gotta gain control of that flag zones immediately before they get the chance to sacrifice it. Because that's like a really cool synergy. I love the flagstones, Elvish Reclaimer synergy. It's really awesome. Oh, nice. Thank you for letting me steal that Celestia Sanctuary. I'll happily steal that. Or you know what? I think I'll still steal the flagstones and just blow up the Sanctuary. Yes, just pass a turn. This is beautiful. So beautiful. Oh, they're going to ghost quarter their own flagstones in response. Oh, never mind. Let's look at an island. They're just ghost quartering. And an aether vial. Dude, this is going to be beautiful. This is going to be so beautiful. I, I can't wait for this. All right. Oh, peace out, Marcus. Thank you so much for hanging out. I appreciate you. Oh, a Titan. Okay, that does that change anything? Oh, no, I can't do that. All right, let's uh, Mwanvuli on the Celestia Sanctuary. Go and get a forest. And Annex on the Flagstones. Oh, uh, that's legendary. All right, I guess I'll keep this one. Do I get to fetch or do they get to fetch? They just scoop it up. That was nice. All right, sideboard against uh, lands. I uh, probably want Ashiok. And Damning Sphere shuts down Celestia Sanctuary, but they only have one Sanctuary, and I know that because we played that deck on the channel. Um, Aether Gust can be annoying. Can put green stuff back on top of their library. Uh, Spreading Seas is great here. All my Land Denial is great here. Maybe I don't bring an Aether Gust. And I just cut a couple Uros. No, no, not Monvoli, Uros. Hope you have a nice night, Marcus. If you're still here, thank you so much for chilling. All right, uh, that's turn two Monvoli. We are definitely keeping turn two Monvoli. We have it in two different ways. We have five mana on turn two. This is going to be beautiful. It's going to be booty flay. 
But I don't have any card draw at the moment. No waterlog groves or anything. No Uros, no Hydroid Kraysi. Radiant Fountain and Sakura. I'm expecting Sakura here. Yep. Ooh, Frosty T, I can play that next turn. Heck yeah. Get a forest, put a Utopia Sprawl. Name blue. Untap. Blue and Monvoli. Get Breeding Spool. And next turn, big boy. <laughs> I love it. It curves out so well. I don't even have to exile SSG. I'm just naturally ramping to it. And then I can also color screw them. I have enough to, I think I have enough to Frost Titan plus color screw them. Yeah, I do. I do. So I can like Frost DT that and then, oh, I'm definitely spreading seizing that, that field of the dead. Monvuli as well. Go get a basic island. And let's spreading seas on Field of the Dead. Draw a card. Utopia Sprawl here on blue, which I probably should have split it up because they have Ghost Quarter. Frosty T. Tap down Forest. They have a Courser. There's a Titan. I'm not going to let them get to that Titan. Just so they know. And an Ashiok as well, because why not? Ashiok. Seems good. Yeah, they scoop it up. I didn't even have to play the Monvuli. I wanted to play it so bad. I was going to like blow up their forest, tap down their, their flagstones, and they were going to be stuck on blue and colorless. I mean, I, they did have the Dryad, but yeah, they were like needing lands. That was a good showing for exactly what the deck is supposed to do. That was perfect. GG. Got a game here against 100 Handed Giant, uh, which I think the card's actually called 100 Handed One, not 100 Handed Giant. And we're going to be on the draw here with some Cynic Ponza. I think that's going to be a key because I can turn to an Uro and ramp more. And if I draw an SSG, I can turn three the Titan. If not, I'll just play the Hydroid Crisis for Xs three and draw a card. Do you think Ephemerate should exist? It is very powerful for a one drop, but yeah, it's a fine card. It should exist. I can't believe nobody's ever blinked a Blade Splicer with it. I seriously thought it was going to go in that kind of strategy. So Breeding Pool Birds, is it just like five color Niv or just Bant Midrange? Bant, Bant Snowblade? Oh, it's Kinnon combo. Is this a viewer? Are they in the chat saying hey? Thank you. All right. I know what they're playing. It is Kinnon combo because we played it on the channel. They said they, they like our content, so this is probably the, what we did. This is probably what we played. I didn't brew it, by the way. I didn't brew it. Somebody else did, but it was awesome. I loved it. All right, put in windswept teeth, crack it. So next turn we get out on frosty tea. But we could die here though. If they got cannon plus read from the real or just dead. Or if they have like, um, Neo form. Coco time. Breach. Pig. 
Reach world spine. Uh, can I beat this? Can I beat this? I think I barely die. Yeah, because, like, I can tap down a worm, block another worm, but then the other worm gets me. Yeah, I'm just barely dead. That was close, though. Because then the second, the second Frost Titan would have been the nail in the coffin. All right, sideboard. Let's bring in Aether Gust. And let's cut two Uros. And run it like that. So that's definitely not something we played on the channel. So I think they're on 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 Breach and Pig. So they're on an Illarg deck, the Illarg Breach. So they probably have like Mass Hysteria in there as well, so that they can like have all the ways to give Illarg haste. I mean, they might also have Fervor or like Art. What do you call that card? Rhythm of the Wild. Rhythm of the Wild. Should I play first? Yes. This is questionable. I have Aether Gust, but I, they, like, I don't really do anything here. I think I'm gonna keep it though, cause like I can at least crack the Waterlog Grove. All right, Forest, Arbor, Lef. Noble. Ooh. Okay, let's do that. Another one. Well, if I keep drawing cantrips, that's fine. I'm okay with drawing cantrips. Is it Sylvan Carry added time? No second land? So they do have Kinnon. All right, let's um, Aether Gust Kinnon. And since we know that they're not drawing a land, actually, let's check the game log. See if they put it on top or bottom. They put Kinnon on the bottom. So they're looking for mana. I think I still just want to waste my spreading seeds because I don't want to go down on mana. All right, let's just get a breeding pool shocked. Don't have to worry about our life total because we're going up against the combo deck. Just a cantrip. Rossi T, that's happening next turn. And then after Frosty T comes Hydrate Crisis. They found their land. Elvish Mystic and Elvish Mystic. Okay, so they got a bunch of mana, counteracting our Ponza shenanigans, but still gonna do it. Frosty T, tap down breeding pool. Can't believe we haven't found like Annex or Monvoli yet. Eladomri's. Bird. I should have tapped down the Noble because it technically gives them more colors. All right, Waterlog Grove. Crisis. All right, we drew another Crisis. 
go to combat and swing tap down bird they just have too much mana dorks counteracts everything we do and they're getting their red source all right looks like it's the end of us But if I top deck a second uh, Titan, I can actually beat a World Spine Worm. Yeah, like we can take 15 and go to two, or 16 rather, and go to one. And I can deal with the worms. I gotta draw another Frosty. No second Frosty. All right, go to combat. Attack with Frosty. Tap down Worm. Actually, the bird kills us. Oh, but I have the flying um, Hydroid Crisis. All right, they're eating it. Sure. And then I can go... I got to play another 5-5 five, five Hydroid, but I don't quite have the mana. So this has to block this, but... It like, if they attack with a bird, yeah, I can block the bird. These can block that. So, yeah, I just have to go with a bunch of mana dorks here. And the next turn, big O Hydroid. Play both Noble and win. Noble, Noble, attack. Oh, dude, you're right. I could have done that. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, that was missed lethal right there. Yeah, the bird's gonna get me, dude. I missed lethal that turn with the hydrate crisis. I'm so sad. So I totally punted that one away, but just know the win was there. All right, so GG to hundred handed one. Got a game here against Pantera 04, and we're going to be on the draw here with some Simic Ponza, and let's keep that. Looks pretty good. We got our Arbor Elf, so that's not an Annex until turn three, unfortunately. So hopefully we draw SSG or a, or a Utopia Sprawl. Oh no, it's either Smallpox or 8-Rack. Thank goodness I didn't have Hand Disruption on the first turn, so maybe it's not 8-Rack. Please don't smallpox me. That'd just be so devastating. I, I'm probably going to insta-scoop if I get smallpoxed here, if they just go flagstone smallpox. Okay, blood gassed. All right, let's play another Arbor Elf. So this is just a mono black midrange. Attack for one. They can't block. Just please don't go Liliana here. Don't if it's a if it's a Liliana, please be Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Please don't be Last Hope. Village rights. Okay, this is spicy. Is it like a bitter blossom deck? Like, are they gonna slam a bitter blossom here? This is this is sick. Now I want to build a a mono black deck with bitter blossom and village rights and blood gas. That seems cool. Tragic slip. Thank goodness I still have the mana that I need. No, that screws me. Oh, man. All right, that completely kills her momentum. That completely kills her momentum. All right, I can still grind out, though, if I, like, find Uro later. Mutaval. Okay, I'm going to steal that Mutaval. All right, just two blood gas. I can deal with this. All right, that's a... Uh, I gotta say, Apollo, that's a good-looking Muta Vault you have there. Don't mind if I borrow it? Yoink. Mom says to share. You gotta share your Muta Vault. Yo, they're going to animate it for me. 
All right, let's fetch here because why not? And next turn, I get off Frosty. Hey, Bren. Good to see you again. Hey, Kyoji. Both of y'all's showing up. Oh, it's uh, Vampire Aristocrats. How are you guys doing? Good to see you. They're going to sack a vampire to Lightning Helix something? Are they going to kill my noble? Or are they hitting me? So they're just going to keep that little synergy going. But I have to slam Frosty here. Utopia Sprawl in the forest. Name Blue. Whatever, 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 and whatever. Frosty T. Tap down a land. And then I can play a massive Hydroid Crisis. Gain a little bit of life back. Blade of the Blood Chief. That's going to make Blood Gas fat. I'm going to have to tap that thing down. You got into magic again? Nice. I deal three to my dome. I'm going to have to kill that sword in here. They had another land to get that thing back, so they can just suicide it here. Block there. They get two counters on their other blood ghast, or on nothing. Oh, another Frosty. You know what? I'm playing second Frosty. I am playing second Frosty. Tap down Blood Ghast. Go to combat. Swing at Sorin. Tap down a land. Get exalted. And now it's just over at this point. I'm not going to crack my Waterlogged Grove. I want to just keep all my mana to play the biggest Hydroid Crisis I can. Drawn is a good one, but don't matter because I'm just going to tap it down. All right, play a forest, and let's do it. I'm even going to take a pain. Actually, you know what? It's too risky to take a pain there off the waterlog Grove, because they could have a sword. Actually, no, I'm going to gain life here. There's no, no point in not doing it. The big boy. Attack, attack. Tap down your creature, and tap down your creature. All right, they're down to 13. See, we even got our momentum stopped and had the regular turn four annex, and we're still doing this. See, look, that's what I was fearing right there, the Soren. Because, like, if I stayed at three and they sacked that, it would have been a problem. They're getting close for sure. Work might furio, though. Furlow. I don't know what that means. All right, activate Muta Vaults and just get in there. Tap down Soren for the lulls. Tap everything. This is tap everything dot deck. This is actually a really good deck, um, Vampire Aristocrats, although I really think it should be black-white because you get a lot of good pieces, like stuff I can't remember off the top of my head right now. But yeah, we played Vampire Aristocrats on the channel, and it was so good. All right, so against them, I probably want 
Bale of Summer because they're mono black, but then again, probably not. I feel like Ops and a Bailoth would be solid here. Um, yeah, let's bring in Ops and a Bailoth and let's cut um, maybe Spreading Seas because I probably won't be mana screwing them so, like, color screwing them so heavily since they're mono colored. Yeah, all right, I'm down with that. Let's do that. What's good? Chocolate. Hey, declared bishop. Chocolate. Fireworks. Um. Spicy peppers. Veggie spring rolls. Yeah, that's it. Chocolate, spice, fireworks, and veggie spring rolls are what's good. Um, yeah, let's keep this. We got the mana dorks, although no turn to Monvoli. I need to draw SSG or a Utopia Sprawl. Don't think you've ever heard a woman say chocolate isn't good. Everybody loves chocolate. If you, if you don't love chocolate, you're an alien. You're not from this dimension if you don't like chocolate. You're, you're a spawn of evil. Chili flakes? I mean, I guess. I've put chili flakes in food before, but I prefer the actual peppers. Although I'm so sad that the grocery store doesn't doesn't stock ghost peppers anymore because I used to buy those. Alright, let's go Noble. I probably should have went Misty there. It was a misplay. And let's attack for two. Mute of all. Good, uh, good Monvoli target there. Although I kind of am tempted to Monvoli their swamp so I can try to color screw them. But it doesn't make any sense. I'm taking a beating here for sure. And their knight is growing fatter. Just like your mom. Yeah, I'm getting very damaged here. This is quite scary. All right, Monvuli. I can get a pretty decently sized Hydroid Craze this next turn, but I think I desperately need to get down Frost Titan to tap down that Knight. You know, it's not actually a ridiculous idea to chump block here. Surgical and Monvuli, sure. Okay, so they see my hand. I don't know, dude. I think I should chump. Oh, they got Nykthos, too. That's a good thing to tap down. Bloodgast and... Blade of the Blood Chief, and they're going to equip it. And they can sack Bloodgast also to put two counters in that. Yeah. Okay, this is big. Um... I think I should chump block. Yeah, now I gotta get out Frosty and tap down Yeheni here. Frosty. Tap down, big boy. What if foothills go? Now they can activate Nykthos and activate Knight of the Ebon Legion and get Death Touch. And they can actually eat my Frost Titan, which is annoying. Like, this is the one of the most busted one drops I've ever seen. And they're going to take my Hydrate Crisis now. Yeah, this card's nuts, dude. Super nuts.
All right, well, I got to draw a second Frost Titan. If I can draw a second Frost Titan, I basically win. And they could also find a sword and just dome us. So this is very Monka-S right now. Ooh! Ooh! That is an Uro. Um... Um, can I pull, can I get back Earl right now? I think I'm one short. I have to crack Water Log Grove. I think I play Uro. Tron's gonna be super scary now with Zendikar. Tron taps for 10 with Forsaken Monument. I don't think they're gonna play that card. It's too clunky for them. That thing's fat. All right, put in the waterlogged grove. Play a waterlogged grove. Crack a waterlogged grove. Um, untap a forest. Blue, blue, green, uro. Exile the rest of my grave. And Uro's gonna have to chump block here. Game three, oh, that's an option of Bayloth. That's a good chump blocker. Tack, tap down Yeheni. I can maybe win, dude. I have lethal. If they wanna attack here and I chump block, I swing back for lethal. Oh, I'm pulling it back. The clutch Uro. This might actually happen. Yo, are they doing it? They're doing it, yo. They just, they punted. That's the game. I have Noble for Exalted. That's game. I swing back for seven. If they don't have a land here, it's over. They gotta go, like, land plus... I don't even know what one mana black spell would deal with Frost Titan here, because they can't target it unless they pay uh, two extra mana. So yeah, they scoop it up. Wow. Clutched it out. Clutched it. Absolutely clutch. Frosty T just controls boards. Man, and he hits hard. And the opponent's deck was awesome. Vampire Aristocrats definitely is a deck that needs to see a lot more play. Just so, the Sword and Imperius Bloodlord is so good with like Blood Gas and stuff like that. It could be really awesome. I like it. Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. So we're speeding up the next two rounds today, and this one was the longest game in the stream. I always like to start on the longest one. So that first game we completely just destroyed uh, what looked to be Esper taxes at first, but like we just spreading seized both of their lands and then we just completely mana screwed them and they scooped it up. Game number two though, they hit their Aether Vial and this is where the roadblock is. Aether Vial is a big problem for Ponza decks. So you gotta have a way to deal with it. And every time we play a wacky Ponza brew on the channel, it's always Aether Vial that gives us problems because they like Aether Vial pretty much says they don't care about our land destruction. So they just completely got around anything we try to throw at them because they can just cheat stuff in with a vial. And so even the next game, like look how mana screwed they are. They have no colors. They're stuck on colorless and a blue that I gave them from Spreading Seas. And there's really nothing they can do about that. But because of the Aether Vial, they can do everything. So it, like my advice is if you're going to build a Ponza Brew, make sure you can deal with Vials easily. Either go Soul Tie for Abrupt Decay or go Red. In like Ponza decks in general, if you're going to be competitive with it, probably should have red this deck worked out pretty decently but it lacked a vile answer or at least a consistent vile answer and i was gonna put brazen borrower in here but i didn't and brazen borrower would be a good way to reset the vial 
Well, yeah, red gives you pillage, which is a land destruction spell for three, but also has the versatility of hitting an artifact so you can hit vials. That is super important, and I think that that is a good decision if you want to brew upon the deck. Anyways, we're going on to the last sped up game, and I really wanted to leave this one unsped up because it was another L, not gonna lie, um, and I had mostly W's non-sped up, um, but I decided to speed this one up because I was just like super tilted, and I just didn't want to show that, um, and I gotta find a better way to like cope with tilt on stream because once I get tilted, I just start trash talking my opponent's deck or just like complaining about the matchup, and this matchup, like, as you can see, we got extremely flooded for starters. But secondly, um, they have Aether Vial. And like we just talked about, Aether Vial completely, like, we denied the heck out of their lands. They have no lands, no colors. And Aether Vial completely just says nope. And then they even have Smoke Braider on top of that. And Smoke Braider alone also just completely denies every bit of land destruction we can throw at them. Because it it's a two-drop mana dark that taps for two mana in any combination of colors four elementals and then risen reef just proceeds to fix them for days and so that is just the perfect recipe for dealing with what our deck is trying to do um so yeah if there is another lesson out of this match it's get an answer to aether vial <laughs> that is the biggest problem aether vial and like even if you went red you can have a braid which can also kill the smoke braider so yeah with that we're gonna go on to the wrap up hope you enjoyed so we ended up with three total wins and the deck performed good except for when we were go up against aether vile decks or um there there was even some problem even some problems with heavy ramp decks it's just when somebody's ramping like crazy obviously that counteracts ponza it counteracts land destruction when they play a million mana dorks or when they have an aether vile to just not care about lands in general and it, that, that always happens it's just like it would be like we're playing a different deck and we just play like seven matches and then we don't go up against a single aether vile deck and then when we queue up ponza all of a sudden we go up against like a bunch of different aether vile decks um it just happens it's like the magic gods like to throw those matchups at you just to give you a challenge and uh yeah it's difficult and we didn't have any naturalized effects but like i said in one of the games when I originally brewed this deck, I had Acidic Slime in here and uh, Primal Command so that you can like be able to reset Aether Vials and go get Acidic Slime and blow up Aether Vials and blow up enchantments and artifacts. And I took that out at the last minute um, and then I forgot that I didn't actually have any naturalize effects in here. So maybe it wouldn't be a horrible idea to cut like in a row to put in an acidic slime or maybe like cut two slots somewhere to put in two acidic slimes because they're not bad. They still blow up lands and they still they're annoying blockers because they got death touch. So they could keep you alive while also blowing up a mana. And it's not a bad idea because it also give you the Aether Vile answer. And uh, if not, maybe find some kind of naturalized effects to put in your sideboard. And another thing that I almost put that I considered was Brazen Borrower. And Brazen Borrower um, can bounce and reset Aether Vials too. And that's pretty cool. I like that. And that might be worth giving a try. So if you tr if you decide to play this deck yourself, just make sure to have some kind of naturalize naturalized ability. Other than that, the deck worked out flawlessly. It was perfect. And... Um, we got the clutch, we got the turn to like Annex and Monvoli Acid Moss a bunch off of Arbor Elf Utopia Sprawl, and we did it once off of SSG. I like the SSG in here giving us another potential like 10 different, 12 different ways, actually one, two, three, yeah, 12 different ways to get the turn to Annex and, and Moss off in addition to Arbor Elf Utopia. So that's 16 total ways that you can get in your opener. To get the turn two and i like that potential i think that was something that the deck really needed and uro um also but another thing that i was like thinking is that maybe spreading seeds doesn't have a place in here it was good and i liked it in a lot of situations i like spreading seeds it's great but it doesn't it like it's an enchantment so it doesn't put anything into the graveyard for uro so maybe in some situations uro is going to be hard to get back because you need to fill your graveyard and there's no other way than having um i put in 11 fetches and these two crack lands 
and then there's acid moss and those are like our main ways to fill our grave other than that our stuff just getting killed or us getting thought seized get stuff in our grave other than that like yeah you're gonna have a hard time getting a row back so maybe some kind of like spell based land destruction although there really isn't much and if not you can run like boomerang that's something maybe wipe away and that's like a, a spell that can deal with the mana at least temporarily I don't know there's things you can do there's things you can mess around with anyways i hope you enjoyed the video if you did hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day let me know deck you want to see in the comments down below go check out the twitter link is down below as well as a link to twitch if you want to catch one of these live streams we stream our magic the gathering gameplay all day long on mondays and we stream variety through the rest of the week tuesday through friday if you want to come out and see some other games and if you want to try today's deck out for yourself consider signing up with mana traders in the link down below using the code marin moon to save 15 percent off and you can rent today's deck and play along with us it is the most trusted and reliable magic online card rental service the best way to play all the MTGO you want. And if you want to try today's deck out on paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That's our TCG player link and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And special thanks to all of our supporters over on Patreon is because of you guys, this channel is possible. So thank you very much for your support. And with that, I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.